morning was pretty interesting so sometimes when you when you want to learn touch and go you just have to force yourself to touch and go I've never done touch and go when it's that heavy and I think it's not it's just drilling the movement pattern as well as believing that you can do it so it's like up here as well as the movement pattern. try it if your form breaks down go lighter if not sometimes it's just the belief this is why I love jazz she is creative genius <laughs> It's not that creative, but it's very nice. If you don't eat this yogurt, do. Macros per 100 grams, only two grams of sugar, four grams of protein, and only 55 calories per 100 grams. The way you make it even better, you add strawberries, you add caramel chaos. Grenade bar. Team, I know you can't see it, but every time I walk around this, this bit here, there's always a spider's web and it always gets me. You should go up to Will and his joggers and go, what are those? Oh, Is that what you were just about to do? <laughs> what are they? These are three quarters, mate. Sound. Looks like Will today is wearing Jasmine's leggings. Let's train. <laughs> no, I'm laughing! Ah! What are you doing, Jess? I don't know, but it really hurts. Glute activation. Is it, am I only halfway through? How long is she holding it for? A minute. A minute each side. You're meant to do ten rounds. But we'll only do two, Jazz. <laughs> uh, I'm not bad at it. You'll be like Nicki Minaj after this. <laughs> I'm broken double unders. PV. Heavy. What is going on team Craig with you back with another commentary over today's video and you kind of seeing the differences right here in the team training programming itself. I'm doing the conditioning bias day so the 50 double unders and 5 touch and go power cleans. Will is on the strength bias program so for him he's finding positional strength. He's doing 5 power cleans with a hold in the catch not touch and go for max weight. I get a lot of questions about team training programming and people like which, which, which bias should I go on? Should I go on the conditioning? Should I go on the strength should i go on the general and to be honest it just really depends on what your aims are i know that sounds kind of ridiculous as you can see from these couple of clips basically i just wanted to point this out because for some of you it's kind of i, I even i find it interesting 
the way it's programmed. With the conditioning, we'll just keep your heart rate a little higher throughout the session, do a little bit more under fatigue. With the strength, there'll be a little bit less conditioning, a lot more heavy lifting, slower stuff, controlled work. And then just with the general, you got a good mix of both. Basically, all of the programs follow the same periodization, follow the kind of the same structure, just with a few subtle differences. And it's kind of nice because like today's session when we're training with Will, our strength portion at the start was a little bit different, but then the rest of the session was the same, so it was fun to jump in with him and do the same conditioning portion. <laughs> Fraze, what are we doing? So you split squat, but you're gonna try and get your hip as close to your ankle as possible. So you drive up, stretch this back, and then have it lift off a little bit. So try and come, you probably come forward a little bit here. Let's split. That's it, and then drive that thing up, chest up. You feel that stretch? Mm -hmm. You feel your hip, deep hip position, yeah? And then push straight back. Good. And keep it so, like, don't fully lock out. That's it. You go down three seconds, pause for two, just off so you keep in tension and straight up. So we're looking at a split squat just to get you to push your hips right in deep. So like, if you imagine being in a squat position, catching a clean, your legs are going to be more like that, close to those hips. Instead of when you do a front squat, you're not going to be vertical shin. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, because I'll be under yeah, the Yeah, so you're trying to be here. Yeah. Stretch out your hips, Back with part two of the commentary. I just wanted to quickly explain this split lunge. So it's not like a normal split lunge or barbell lunge that you would that you would usually see. Great commentary, Craig, going really well. No, but basically, if I put them side by side, so if I put a normal lunge here that you can see on the screen on the left, and then the lunge that we were just talking about there on the right, you can see that there's a hell of a lot more range of motion with the lunge on the right that we're doing. One thing to be aware of of this, if you do have knee, knee issues, then I would stay away from these just because the knee anteriorly moves and comes over the foot. But as you can see, in the bottom portion of the lift, you're in a lot more of a position that looks like a squat. What I love about this variation of the split lunge, if you're someone like Jasmine whose knees fall in when she's at the bottom of a squat and then you start, when you start to stand it up, this targets that strength. This targets that range of motion and the part where maybe the strength lacks. You may look at the move and go, it looks a little bit more quad dominant. It is, but I can tell you when I'm in that bottom position. One, it's great for people out there who have tight hip flexors, especially with the tempo that we were doing, three second negative, two second pause at the bottom, one second up for eight reps on each leg. So it's great for opening up the hips, stretching the front calf, but also because you're on that one leg and you're in a pretty wide lunge position, your glutes and hamstrings are firing like hell to keep you stable, to keep your pelvis level and to stop your knees falling in or out. And that's where the magic of this kind of move really comes into its own. Perfect moves for getting those glutes firing to stop the knees caving in, especially in like that end range. Because if you just do a normal barbell lunge, it's great for strengthening the glutes, but you'll never squat with a vertical shin. And two, it doesn't allow you to get into that deep hip flexion range where 99% of the time is where the knees end up falling in. It's that initial drive out of the bottom. Then you'll see the knees start to cave in. Anyway, if you did like this commentary and you are enjoying the video, as always, smash that like button. You guys are awesome. And uh, we'll talk to you guys later on in the video. The fun stuff, the strength is out of the way. Now it's cardio, so it's light aerobic on Mondays. Basically meaning we don't go super heavy. It's not like a long piece involving a heavy barbell. 20 minute bike at 65 to 70 RPM. I'm gonna hold 65. Every four minutes, including zero, 15 toes to bar. Farmers walk 100 foot with like 30 kilos. So it's not like super heavy, but you just keep moving. Basically it's gonna turn into like two and a half minutes on a bike every time, and then back onto a toes to bar. And Nice. I'm not
202. Oh, she smashed me, I got one. Hey, yo, yo. Look what I bought in the post training food. Can't go anywhere without it. Mm, you bought mild this time. Another oh, session bite. Very bikes. white. Still quite dark, but it's better than it being so light. Another session bites the dust. That was good. This is this is something that's kind of stuck with me when it was Kieran on Saturday. Kieran, Faber Kieran. On Saturday, he said, people do workouts for different reasons. Well, they focus on different things. Then I looked at that workout and I was just like, I want to do every single set of toaster bar and broken and well with a good grip. And I managed it. I wasn't too bothered about the bike, to be honest. I was like, yeah, just hold a good pace, but super happy with the toaster bar and that. Oh, getting better at toaster bar. Craig Gymnastic Ritchie. Kept up with Will right up until the fourth set, and then he lost me. Okay, I'm